years. Obviously, the offer for Team Spirit was probably his the peak of his career for a while there. And he was always a very talented offer, one of those classic online players that everyone suspects of uh, not being the most legitimate. And then sure. they come to LAN and they prove that they can do it. And that's exciting. Um, he was always kind of touted as one of the next offers up. And unfortunately, never broke through that ceiling. So this is his chance to do it again. A lot of strong offers have filtered through Spirit. Yeah, definitely a lot of those. And Here we go. The Pit strongest ever rifler. Yeah, the strongest ever rifler and a, and a pretty damn strong offer. Pistol Round is live. 3D Max is going to be starting on the CT side by virtue of this being Nine Panda's pick. They have a stack towards the B bomb site. Four defenders are here, and it is the correct call, at least for the moment. The question is, how long do they stick around? And they'll stick here, because the Execute's coming in. Duelies! Oh, nice double kill. Two headshots on Glowing and Dilladez, and now the rest of Nine Pandas have to filter in. The salvo of utility is already out, and they don't like what they see at all. They don't like the number of bodies, so gonna back away, but they've got no resources to move elsewhere, but they'll take that gift. Yeah, they will. And that kill back for Midas Balance at least draws Nine Pandas a little closer, but he couldn't get away, so he does get traded immediately. The important that that trade did come in, because it keeps 3D Max ahead. Still a minute left, and they know that those nine pandas players are committed towards this Hachi's B bomb site. And Hachi is under a lot of pressure. Fortunately, Lucky's come over in time to take out Clax and damage up Seas too. It doesn't look like Seas is going to get away with anything as that double swing comes in, and 3D Max eventually do get the pistol round. Yeah, Haji's fortunate to, to, to stay alive long enough to allow Lucky to activate, and smart play from Lucky to get a bit aggressive to swing on Monster when his teammate was in that extended fight, because Haji was really running out of ammunition. And a good triple kill in the round from Lucky. This is the first two exercise. Looks like it might be clean and easy after that, but Nine Pan has pumped the brakes and make things a little interesting. Pistol round to 3D Max. And no plant for Nine Pandas, so they're going to stick to just Glocks. The flock of Glocks returns. And it should be cleaned up pretty quickly here. And Jocko, definitely the player that you would have to sing the praises of the most from map one. Save 3D Max right at the end there when it looked like overtime was about to come through. He steps up with a big triple kill. Had a few of those throughout that second half. He's got a CT start here on overpass, so should be feeling relatively comfortable. We get to see what he does early on, which is apply pressure towards Fountain and drop back safely. And I think that was probably the word, well, one of the words you could describe about his play style over in the first map was safe and, and smart. Sure. Uh, and I, I think that's something that maybe was lacking across the board. Might get some more attention here. Footsteps are heard. The Glocks, I think, are going to be hungry. Oh, and he's stepping right into that flock of Glocks. And the flock is obliterated. Yeah. Destroyed. Now 2 0 up. 3D Max happy with that. And we'll see the buy back in for nine pandas. So money available for the first time. And one of the questions we asked at the start of this map was how good is nine pandas T side going to be? They're about to find out. Bit of a bonus here for 3D Max. I'll keep a couple of SMGs there. This worried me for just a second, Jason. When I seen Shoko walk in front of his teammates. Shout out to Maka, though. Like, even during the utility exchange, he kept his attention on that gap the whole time. He didn't look anywhere else. He didn't move. He didn't budge. He knew there was some danger coming in. Shoko gets through the smoke, and he's going aggressive because he feels freed up due to the fact he has an oh, SMG, and so he heard sick. the steps. He heard the sounds, and now Lucky, he's crunching into the playground. Jocko is close and started the smoke. I don't really know how this has gone so badly for 3D Max. Now Jocko doesn't really have the position to stand and fight, and Nine Pandas have recovered in the chaos. You have to stand and fight, though. There's no escape from this. And if you're a teammate, you don't want to overextend to try and help Joko because that, that would, could make it even further of a disaster. So he's on his own, and they're going to start rapping behind him. Nine Pan has taken their time to, to handle this situation. No one giving him an opportunity, so he realizes he's probably being wrapped. So he's going to start getting a little more aggressive, changes up that angle, but the flank, he did not consider it. And it comes through the back, Dilladez takes Jocko out, and that looked like a great opening maneuver for 3D Max. It looked like it was going to net them a lot of success. I lucky needed that kill. Lucky needed that first kill that he swung into to make it really interesting. Uh, that, either that or the option is you've already got Joko with that deep Molotov so aggressive through the smoke that Lucky can just back away. And you just say, okay, let's see what the MP9 can find. Regardless, now they find themselves in this situation where they control the center of the map, but ain't nobody home. Yeah, 5v3 is not exactly winnable for 3 max at this point. This is likely just a save unless they stumble somehow right into this trap. 
Yeah, the only way that they would win this round, it feels like at the moment, is if Nine Pandas suddenly decide they want to go back down Connector in the final 15 seconds, but that's not what's happening. They're going towards the A site. They're going to put that bomb down, and the bonus round does not pay off despite having what looked like the perfect opening maneuver. Nine Pandas keep five alive. I really liked it. It was cool. I, wanted, I was interested to see what he was going to be able to pull off. I think if you run that maybe nine times out of... Well, maybe, maybe like seven times out of ten, Jason, <laughs> it probably works out well for them. You at least get that kill on Lucky, you know? It doesn't happen. That's one of my favorite things to do. Just make up numbers and statistics. Say it, say it out loud. Yeah, that's your thing. Say it with conviction. With conviction. Seven out of ten sounds reasonable. It does sound kind of kind of reasonable. Back up. I'm gonna kill on Clax. Now it's an AK-47. You'll pick that up. Not bad. It's a pretty good upgrade. You might not be able to save it though. Yeah, that's the problem. Oh, yep. Yeah. Not saving it. Not allowed. That wood is paper thin. So nine pandas take it right back. Two to one. Three to max gonna buy up in this as well. Another chance, another crack at it before this T side takes control of the economy and can start building up on their score. I've really seen the decline of gamer sleeves. We don't see them as much anymore. No, they were they were hot for a while. Yeah, they definitely were. People were picking them up. We've seen like top players using them, and now they just disappeared. Things come and go. The Counter Strike is eternal. Round four underway. Dilida is burning towards the playground, wants to get through that with a smoke of his own. Haji takes bullets to the knees. He used to be an adventurer. Just settling into a slow round. This is what we were talking about before, Jason. You know, overpass can become this slow, methodical T side. And if you run the clock down, you gotta be damn perfect towards the end. One mistake and it can cost you. And right out of the gate, 3D Max is playing this very passively, so there's a lot of runway towards that A bomb site. They even have an op in the field of play, but it's it's not here for the moment. It's parked at B. It's parked at short. So Joko's gonna have a job to do, and he answered the bell a number of times on nuke. Yeah, Joko, good positioning. Brilliant flashbang, though. I just balance sets up C's for the easy kill. And now Lucky is burned away at the bank. It doesn't matter, they can't go for this. They're, they're way too far away. Yeah, their catch is on fire, so and, they go safe. And with no money as well, they never risk the AWP in this kind of a situation. So nice, easy victory for Nine Pandas, who are just like, we will take the entire map that you have allowed us to have for free, and we will march in and execute on the A-bomb site with ease. So that can't happen again, is what you're saying here from 3D Max. They can't, they can't do that once again in the next round. I'm sure it will. I'm sure it will happen again. I just might see the same, same eventuality. Yeah. Well, maybe they can change the position of the AWP, maybe get Mac involved. It's it's like, it's one of the hard parts of overpass of the CT side is managing like how much resistance you, you, you actually mount at each different stage as they take control of the bathrooms, right? Like you can have your kind of initial aggression, a pick with the AWP towards Fountain, towards Party. You can have someone like stick at Party if you want to be aggressive in Con, but then there's that extra layer where you can fall back to bathrooms in a few spots that you can mount resistance there, and then obviously fall back all the way back to the bomb site. So, I don't know, it's just, it's just interesting. I, I, just, I just sometimes cringe a little bit at the pro level when I see teams play passively back at the A bomb site from, from the start of a round to the finish of a round. And then suddenly you're surprised because there's like four players peeking you at the last it's, Well, it's just also like the missed opportunities of gathering information, of knowing exactly where they're scaled, because you need that information to call for a rotate. Mm. And that's why also it's, I mean, a decision of, of moving the AWP around the map, but that AWP being parked at short for most of the round is... is wasn't doing anything for you in the previous. Exchanging damage. Onto Seized and Haji on the opposite ends of the map. Haji a little worse for wear. He's down to 62. You see, I mean, the right out of the gate, they're doing it again. You have one player defending the A bomb site, and he's kind of forced to play it passively way deep at dice boxes. Now, no one's moving up quite yet, and Lucky's called back on the rotation early enough to, to, to help out in any kind of a situation. Yeah. So we talked about how difficult T-side can be on overpass, but if you're 3D Max playing the way they are right now, you're letting nine pandas have all this space to play their style and go through their game. And they're just starting to take it now. They're just starting to move up towards front bathrooms. No one's home. There's a player out towards the long flowers, but again, one player inside the bomb site. And I disbalance with an AWP can at least have a shot at this jumping information. Yeah. And they still don't know the, 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 the scaling yet. They only just spotted it now, and they're already on the bomb site. So the panic rotation is coming up. Lucky doesn't stay alive. But remember, Joko is still at long, and Glowing considers that, and Joko is no more. Yeah, take it. 
<laughs> my Pettis is loving it. Thank <laughs> you very much. A pair of very easy rounds. And yeah, you got to save again because 3D Max don't have a lot of money left over. They've got an all here. They got M4s. They just won't have that going into the next. But the problem is, if you're nine pandas, you're starting to see your money swallow in a couple of players. So you might even be able to send a hunting party off to get rid of some of these weapons. And that's exactly what's happening. So Clax is on the push through T-Spawn, seized on the prowl through Connector. And in both of these rounds, there's been an op in play for 3D Max. We haven't even seen it take a shot yet, have a chance at a fight. You have such an expensive piece of weaponry that it's hasn't been able be to have hands. impact. Okay, now, you okay. know, C spots it all. Yeah, he sees it all, but I think Clax is close enough to make anything happen. So at least you save three weapons. Yep, three weapons will be saved. And one of them is that op. So you're right, we got to see the op be actually used, shot, even for fun. Somewhere. Just yep. shoot in the air. Well, the nice thing now is I don't, I don't think, I don't think 3D Max can necessarily. I mean, they might buy up on the other two players just with MP9s because they have the three weapons. But you're going to have to see the AWP get involved. You're going to have to see the M4s be a little bit more aggressive. You're going to have to see them provide a little bit more resistance towards bathrooms as well eventually. Mm, yeah, time out taken. Maybe some of those problems will be addressed. But the coach, get 3D Max back into this one because it has been relatively easy. In fact, not relatively, completely easy for Nine Pandas since the guns have come out. I'm just gonna hope that they can keep that up. I just balance as the sniper in his hands, AK-47's on the rest. And the buy's not bad here for 3D Max. Can obviously with the save call coming in, trying to keep the energy high here inside of the French team. And that was something we got to see over um, Nuke, the fact that even when rounds were going against them, even when they felt like they had lost control of the first half, when you cut to the player counts, they still look pretty happy. So staying in it mentally is very important. Yeah, I, I don't think there, there's not, This is these are two teams that don't really have a whole lot of expectations on them in exactly, the same way yeah. that the other teams do, right? So you, you do get to play a little bit loose. There's not that, you know, like it, you, we saw like NIP get eliminated and like the public. <laughs> Reaction obviously, to it, yeah. the attention on that, the scrutiny on that, and then obviously with Falcons as well. 3D Max and Pan Nine Pandas, they don't they don't have that same level of expectations and attention. I mean, placed they do. On their shoulders. They do have expectations, but it's expectations of them not making it. Well, the expectations are placed by themselves. Exactly, right? and also it feel. But, but, but I do throw sort of throw into the question the fact that these are two teams that feel like they could beat each other. So yeah, at this point, this would be. A frustrating match to go out on because you feel like you, you have an opportunity. Yeah, to make you can't it. really can't really complain with that with that one. Yeah, it's not like you're going up against FaZe or Falcons or one, well, maybe that's a bad example, but <laughs> one of these big teams in, uh, in the final matchup. But Dilades straight through mid. Jocko, interestingly enough, tries to get some early information, ends up getting stopped. Yeah, kind of a bummer. They do actually get a, get aggressive and try and provide some of that resistance. Very committed from Jocko, and he goes down. Just a clean peek. And Dilidez finds an opening. Yeah, and three players stack over towards this B-bomb site for the three D-Max defense. And Nine Panthers have just walked into A every other time. This time they're going B. And it might pay off here for 3D Max. This is their best chance to win a gun round yet. And Klax is charging through Monster. Hasn't seen his first target, eventually will. Haji cleaved away the back of the smoke grenade. And Maka finally ringing out a shot with that ult, but it's only one before he's dead. An exercise tries to be sneaky, but a no scope from my disbalance looks good. And Lucky has to run away to save on the other side of the map this time. Nine pandas break through B. Yeah, their scaling when they pull the trigger on these hits is really, really fast. And it's getting them past all of the counter utility that 3D Max is, is chucking out into the world. By the time the exercise even spots them coming out of monster from toxic barrels, they're like basically already at the pillar. By the time he gets his gun out, he had a nade in hand and just it, it came to waste. 3D Max getting schooled in this first half of Overpass right mm -hmm. now. And you can see why Nine Pandas wanted to go to the B-bomb strike, because surely if you get that kill on Jocko, you, you expect a player from B to rotate up. There's no trade, so you... They actually just... didn't. They had three players exactly. the whole and time. They still didn't rotate, yeah. so the idea was there for Nine Pandas to walk into maybe a weakened B defense, and 3D Max still had the better defense on that bomb site yeah, and still failed to get anything done. Especially considering they've just overran the A bomb site a couple of times to start the, the gun rounds as well. But finally, most of the weapons taken away from 3D Max, and now they're going to have to descend back into just a half by with pistols around this one saved M4. Things looking good for Nine Pandas in the early going of Overpass, trying to equalize this series at one to one. Take Brings this to, to a third map. Yeah, Ancient would be that decider to see who we're sending home. Never nice to send anybody home.
Umax have not played overpass yet in this competition. I think we can currently see why. Get too comfortable. Lucky. Boost it up to have a peer down into the water. It's actually an opening kill for 3D Max. It's Maka that's taken Dilladaz out of play. That's a peek from like stairs to, to like the T's ramp outside of F F uh, Fountain. That's a pretty crazy shot. Well oh, done. So mid. You can actually jump up and do jumping damage with the MP9 on this boost. You see a lot of players using this in CS2. You wait for the sound cue and then you jump up, do some damage, drop it behind it. Nice shot from Lucky. I don't know how, but this is the best round yet for 3D Max. They've got a two-man advantage. They've got the weakest of weapons. Now they've got a better gun in hand. Joku dies as he tries to get up short side in the flank from Maka. Oh, it's been detected and he didn't get the kill he wanted. That Molotov doesn't go deep enough, and now they've got a pathway to run back up through Connector. They're on the chase, they're on the prowl, and Haji, ooh, he gets in behind them, but can't stop by Disbalance from running away. The door just closes in time. Maka now is going to go out towards Long, and now it becomes a little bit of a guessing game for Nine Pandas. How do you position? Because you have to protect the plant. You know somebody was available flanking behind you. Dangerous. Good slide out from Lucky. High Disbalance has to get off the bomb. One spam down through smoke, but this flank Long is coming in ever closer. Yeah, Maka's still coming from Long. This is the position that's surely going to bring them down in this round and Ford's glowing into the clutch. 1v2, he knows exactly where Maka is. He gets back to the bathrooms and this is a good post plant, but he peeks immediately. And Haji brings his head off his shoulders. 3D Max with one rifle and pistols across the rest. They pull off a third round. Yeah, that's uh, that's actually crazy. As you mentioned, like the weakest buy they've had in these gun rounds and they somehow pull it off. One M4 brought into it. And they still manage to win. Good deagle shot to open things up. A good flank from Maka as well. Just a well put together round. Lucky with some beautiful shots as well. Holding off the initial thrust in towards B. And the defense outlasts this time. Let's go. Yeah, very happy with that one, 3D Max. That's an opportunity, but it's it's not going to be a surefire thing to get back into this half. You, you can't replicate rounds like that. You've got to do it when you got the guns out. So far, the gun on gun has not been that pretty for 3D Max, but this is different. I this is this is fine. Like you, this now is going to allow them to shift someone back to A pretty quickly. I I'm, I am surprised to see the op pretty much every single round being at this B bomb site, but taking control of short. There's only one defender at the A-bomb site, that's Joko. Passive yet again. Have to be the only player there. Maybe he can push into bathrooms, which is what he looks to be doing, getting a little closer. Try and detect information a bit earlier on. He can call for rotations. In fact, there is a rotation coming up, and Exercise is pushing through that tunnel. He's about to have a duel against Klax, who now has spotted it on the jump spot. Big reaction there from Klax to get his 8K out in time. Dilides wins that fight against Jocko. Fortunately, Lucky's rotated up in time to try and stop this. He'll delay with his utility belt, and his teammates now make a rotation further up. And there's that AWP that's arrived from B. The AWP goes into the open. And Dilidez takes out Maka. You would have liked to have seen Maka play a little bit safer that. Maybe he could have done something with the AWP, but this is now giving Nine Pandas a significant advantage as they leap towards the site for the plant. But Dilidez overextends him long. And Lucky gets a headshot, pushing his Haji and pushing it to his death. His eye his balance handles that easily, and there's a flank coming up through the back stairs. So Lucky has a timer on this play. He hasn't got a smoke nor a kit in his hand. He's got a timer on his life. He ain't defusing this bomb and he ain't falling back, so it's not the kind of timer you like. Yeah, when you go back, you have to either get this kill instantly or you're down. Or you can maybe dodge Clack somehow, but he's gonna have to fight him. Ooh, Ooh nice okay. shot. I take it back, Lucky. I'm so sorry. Yeah. He's gotta run away from the bomb now. That's the issue. Jump into the water, sprinting over towards Monster. Lucky will make it away. But 3D Max. And they had their lifeline thrown out to them, and they didn't swim back to shore. It was very, very disconnected on that rotation over. You mentioned Maka. It seemed like he just hesitated on whether he wanted to beat the utility to play in front of it at truck with the AWP or kind of stay back. And that, that kind of hesitation is what just got his head ripped clean off. Yeah, Jocko getting one. Stayed in the open, so allowed an easy trade to come in. Yeah, it's just like... I still, this A defense, I mean, obviously it's going to have its issues, but even still, when you get Lucky back and you actually have two players at the A bomb site, it's like Joko's playing so far forward, there's no way for Lucky to actually assist him. There's no crossfire set up, there's no, there's no trading there, it's just kind of Joko, let's see what you can get, and then Lucky's like waiting in the bomb site behind you. So, I don't know. I'd just like to see a little bit more 
it, it seems like they're all most of their openings have been these one fours and there's not really a plan when when that player rotates back of how they're going to set up and how they're going to play it's kind of improvised in the moment Yeah, the CT side just hasn't had the answers. We well, got the buy, at least again. The loss bonus is hey, still at a pretty high level. The ops going, eh? Yeah, change up. Mac did a change of scenery, perhaps it'll help him. Instead of playing down in the sewers, they send him up to the surface. Diladez on the ladder. Or rather, slide. So the peak at Long Flash is going to set him up for clearance of party. Uh, this is a good switch up for 3D Max. Let's see if it, if it actually pans out for him. I mean, they had the initial little spam through the smoke, nothing too crazy at Fountain to show that they have some presence there. It slowed nine pandas down a little bit, made them lose, use a little bit more utility. Now you have that set up at Divider. All of the AWP is falling away from it. So once again, it's just Gioco and he's looking like he's easing back as well. So deeper into the bomb site we go. They got the early warning system in the form of Maca, but will it be defective? Because he's not detecting anything. And no one's looking long quite yeah, yet. Yeah, I don't... Yeah, and finally get to check long, but they're going to peek into the AWP. And that's going to be an easy kill. Maca takes the risk to go and fight. He's the utility being thrown out by I Disbalance, and he wants this kill. He's holding for it, misses the shot, blinded, and now under pressure. No sees has gone out to the right, but... Overextends into the open, and Mac is just not looking comfortable. Again, it's because there's there's so much there's so much space for the T side to work with and close that gap. Like when Mac is in that position at dice boxes, like he feels like he has to do something, and it's still like a little bit of a crazy peak because you already saw seized in that position, which is like the checkmate. But he still is just kind of like, well, we lose if I don't if I don't do something crazy. We lose if I don't take a risk somewhere, and that's the risk he's kind of forced into. So a six to three lead, and Nine Panda is now just really abusing this A bomb site. And honest to God, there's no reason for Nine Pandas to go away from this at the moment because 3D Max haven't shown they can stop it. Terrorists win. And most of these rounds that Nine Pandas have won. Max is safe because it's just such a comprehensive victory that there's, yeah, like there's instant no chance. two kills, yep. force the safe call on the other side of the map, and never really having the right numbers. Yeah, it's been tough. It's been really tough to watch. I think almost re I'm almost ready to say we're getting into ancient. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I'm at that point. I, I'm just okay. ready to go. Go to ancient. First pause for for nine pandas. I'm I'm surprised. I don't I'm not, I'm not sure what they what they need, but maybe it's just uh yeah maybe it's just an idea. Maybe it's just keeping making sure the players are gonna keep going. This is a nice shot on the jiggle peak. Not a full commitment to this. Wasn't a whole lot showing. Nothing. Nothing showing, Jason. Uh, that's uh, look. It's just we have the spectator view. It's not the actual yeah, view. Yeah, true, true. The bullet probably didn't yeah. just bend around the corner. Leave the devs alone for just a moment. Leave Subtick alone. Well, there has been some really nice changes. I mean, you can hold angles now. That's really cool. And I love the... <laughs> that's uh, really nice. Though. Yeah. They had a 25% FPS increase. Apparently, that's the number that's been thrown around. Sure. I haven't done the math myself, but other people have. And I trust them. We've got a wonderful community. Round 10 underway. 3D Max have not been able to really do anything on the CT side yet. Outside of a round where they had USPs and one weapon. Gun rounds have not been favorable. Nine Pandas coming around alongside. It is Jocko at the rock. He's alone. Jocko's dead. And Long is now under wraps. Nine Pandas continue to fight forward. Haji's coming over to try and plug that gap. And he's got one of the best weapons available here, and he's gone, he's dead. He peeks dry into the AWP, and it's another 2K right away for nine pandas. Yeah, you might not be wrong about the uh, Ancient coming in. I, this just looks like 3D Max is really uncomfortable without any kind of concrete plan on on this defensive side. So, I I mean, nine pandas is just going just gonna to stack these rounds on each other. Yeah, I mean, you don't always have, like, a seven-map pool. <laughs> you know, so there's going to be mass here 
Obviously a lot weaker on an overpass. Cool crunch though. It's one of those, and they've come back into the round to double kill from Lucky and Exercise. Reactions into the late round, but those kills are pulled back instantly by Glowing. And now it's Exercise. Oh, it could be Glowing reviews. Going against him, but he's found the headshot. Exercise is out of there, and it is seven to three, despite a little bit of excitement towards the end. Yeah, that time, that, that's kind of cool from 3D Max. Like, I'd like to see more of that in these last two rounds is actually, like, reacting to the mid-round. You have that aggressive defense. And, and, like, look at the difference when you have some players in that position and know it's coming. You can rotate those B players to actually make some kind of a play, and they almost pull it back. Get two kills to even things up, but then Glowing pounces into action. A pair of really nice recovery kills for Glowing, even getting the final frag at the end of the day on the USP swing. And Nine Pandas still having no issues. Seven to three. Joke out. Oh, swing. Oh, it's a great setup. He's so disappointed, I'm sure, not to get away with that second. I just balance stays alive for just long enough to get his AWP ready to get the trade. And that's frustrating for Joko. Yeah, it was, but at least he was set up with a flashbang that time. Oh, and the response, peak. the rebuttal, I think 3D Max is starting to feel the pressure of how wide the scoreline is, and they're starting to just kind of push and try and make miracles Ooh. happen. Yeah, a couple of nice shots happening across the board, but uh, it's it's still a 2v3 here, Jason. Yeah, yeah they've brought it into a close affair, but you have a minute, over a minute for Nine Pandas with a man advantage, and it's, again, such a large map. Yeah, it is. It's very big. And the, the trouble at this point is, if you're 3D Max, if you're these two players, you know it's going to be a 3v1 at one of your positions. So you almost want to get information so that you can kind of cheat, cheat with some kind of an educated guess. But again, with the amount of time on the clock and how big the map is, you make Ooh. a move, they could just be waiting for a you. A silent drop too, all of them. So there's no warning system here for exercise. He's still looking at monsters. He's the shadow reacts. Not able to get a kill now. He's under pressure. They double swing him and seized as the only player needed. Great headshot. That bomb plant coming in. Smoke goes up against the flames that were coming towards them. And Lucky is not in a position to win this round, so he'll run away. It's 8 to 3. Last round of the half coming up next. 3 max. If they score a fourth, that's pretty impressive considering how poor the CT side has been. You're right, there has been a couple of moments where they're getting close towards the end of the rounds. I think the previous is a perfect example of that, where they get it close into a 3v3 even number situation after the crunch. But it's just nine pandas finding way too many multi-kills. I mean, they, they threw this half into just chaos when they just showed that they could take the A bomb site basically at will. It's it's like completely destroyed any any game plan 3D Mikes, 3D Max would have had. Seize goes down to the bomb explosion. He was very far away. Or Lucky goes down to the bomb explosion, excuse me. So, last round of the first half. 3D Max trying to get a fourth just to give themselves a foothold in the second half. At this point, Pistol Round feels like a must-win scenario for 3D Max when we switch sides. So, barely any utility. Just a few pieces across the board. Two flashes, one smoke, and not, not even on one player. They're gonna go for a long peek again. Flashbang from front bathrooms. Here comes Haji. So bring the fight instead. Jocko plays at stone. Haji in front of him. It doesn't look like they're going to round the corner. Instead, waiting on nine pandas to come to them. Eventually, they'll probably sense a timing to make a move. And this connector fight, ooh, it's so important for the early going of this round, and it's gone against 3D Max. Mac is down inside of Khan. A 5v4 set up off the back of that. Now the long play comes in. One by one they go. Jocko, the only player that gets a kill. Well, once again, Nine Pandas up early in the round. They're looking so good. In fact, this half is over. We asked the question, how good could Nine Pandas be on the T side? They have been fantastic. 3D Max, sure, not looking comfortable, looking pretty weak on the defense, but Nine Pandas bring the fight to them and punish it. And these last two, three rounds, they've just been shook. They've just been trying anything, any desperate push and response to a kill, and it's just playing right into Nine Pandas. Nice oh, kills lucky. from Lucky. Okay, here we go. 1v1. Yeah, he's brought this right back, and they want that fourth round to play with Lucky so close. But cruelly taken out of his hands. I disbalance in the 1v1, comes back in, and it ends up being that scoreline that we thought was going to happen mere moments ago. 9-3. Lucky just has to shake it off. Admirable effort. 
put a little bit of a smile on your face in a in an awkward situation or in a in a depressing situation. <laughs> Piss around is uh, essential. And I mean, to be fair, one of the strengths that we talked about 3D Max coming into this is they, they seem to be able to get out to hot starts. So pistol rounds haven't necessarily been an issue for them so far at the RMR. It's the things that come after it that sometimes they struggle with. But at least, I mean, look, get yourself three three rounds to begin with. Those first two, put them in a weird money situation. Then we're cooking with gas. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of boxes you have to check off uh, and a huge amount of work to be done here for 3D Max. So, But also remember, we, we don't, these two teams relatively, like Nine Pandas could have, you know, an they ugly CG side. Yeah. But I've got to say, they look much better in Yeah, overpass, that, that would be the one X factor, is they look like they were pretty comfortable in overpass in the first half. You have to imagine the CG side is going to be decently at that level. Well, 3D Max have plenty of utility here in this pistol round. Lots of it. And they're going to be running mid, just bringing the fight to glowing, eradicating him instantly. But it's a double setup inside a connector. And we know how good these jewel Berettas can be inside of Khan. Well, we know how good they can be, not this round. <laughs> we know how good this Lurk can be yeah. after two players go down. Oh, oh Dilla Death, hello. instant death to two. Exercise and Hatchy litter the floor. And now it's panic stations for 3D Max. They have to go back and address that further connector player. And Deladez is now in the bathroom. She's just going silent. That's it. A lot of time off the smoke, though. This, this is actually great. Plant is going to be very wide at truck. So the retake, Nine Pandas is good on the retakes on Nuke. They have no kit, but they do have a smoke in the form of Seas. So he can use that up. And this low HP Maka, oh, surely would have died. One bullet connected, but Seas just couldn't get it done. Instead, he has to rely upon his teammates, and Seas is pulling distraction. Now he pulls in a headshot, and Maka left the bank. Well, he's dead, and that's a great retake for Nine Pandas. Ten rounds. I don't even mind the aggressive play from 3D Max. It's just a bummer that you're not able to find Seas there, because he occupied so much time, even added a headshot on top of things. It's 10 to 3. Nine Pandas might just be closing this one out nice and quick and taking us to Ancient. Three rounds away from bringing this to a third map in the series, and then pressure increases exponentially for both squads. And I think that is the positive side for 3D Max here, is the fact that you won the first map, and you barely won it, but you, you got it under your belt. So yeah. you've been given at least the lifeline to bring this to a third deciding map. It'll basically become a best of one to decide who is going home, who's staying in the RMRs. It still has a chance to make it through. Galil's out straight away for 3D Max. They got a bomb plant so they can get those rifles. Interesting to see them going for full rifles rather than, you know, play on a Mac 10, get some extra utility. So three smokes, one flash. That's what they've got. So they scale up long quickly. And there's no one here for Nine Pandas detecting that yet. No, there's got to be a timer though. And yeah, they see, they, they hear no pressure at the B bomb site. So Glowing's going to back off a little bit from his position at bathrooms. He's got a second player who's come over. I disbalance. Hasn't seen anything. Just, oh, they're so close. They're so close. And he hasn't spotted anything. Now he knows. Oh, yeah, he definitely knows now. And utility is coming in. As 3D Max pounce upon the bike. It's I disbalance somehow getting away. With that kill, Glowing goes down towards bathrooms. And a spam down through the wall is not bad from Jocko, but ill-advised swing. Fortunately, Mac is able to trade and lucky. Oh, no, it's a disaster. He had a chance to take a double kill on the connector push, and now exercise. Look at this for a hunt. Chasing after Seized around the corner. Seized ran out of ammo as soon as he started that reload. It was his death sentence. And now Dilladez is left in a 1v2. They know exactly where he is, and he's taking damage from earlier engagements. So he's down to 26 health. He'll attempt to come back into this, and a good double swing from 3D Max. Important they win that force by. Yeah, good trades coming into the bomb site. 3D Max by a new lease on life. A good round win. Nine Pandas looked like they were putting something together when that flank comes up the stairs and Lucky misses his opportunity, but that chase down a seize this time, it's like identical to the pistol round. This yeah. time they get the kill, and this time they can turn around immediately and readjust for the retake coming from Banana. Well, how many can you get 3D Max? I guess that's the little mini competition you can set yourself. How many rounds can they get on this T side? Just focus one round at a time. They're up against pistols in this one. It should be five now for the French. The French scene is another one just like Sweden that had glory days. In early Counter-Strike versions, start to see us go. And towards the end, we just lost them. We just lost Sweden, we lost France. They fell off the map. Yeah, how, Zywu, of how things changed in 10 years. Yeah, there's players out there, a couple, you know, but they're playing in international rosters. You don't have the whole national team anymore. 
Joko clearing everything out for his team. Yeah, he's done a lot of that. I don't know if he wins this fight. Oh, he's gonna get overrun. It's time for Nine Pandas to hustle to the B-bomb site. No one's moved, so they're gonna miss this timing to be able to resist any of this attack. So, free, easy round for 3D Max. In fact, nobody's shifting, everyone's pushing forward. Exit kills may be at the game plan. Bong being planted now. Yeah. And 3D Max is gonna cut the lead to half. Yeah, because they obviously force spotted in this round, Nine Pandas, if they would go for this disadvantaged retake attempt, they would likely lose everything and then nothing to play with in the next. So at least this way, if they save upgraded pistols, Mac 10s, Kevlar, they'll have a fighting chance next round. You can see them take a few more risks in the next round than they were able to pull off in this one. So 10-5, it's, it's almost likely we see 10-6, to be honest. And then you're only four rounds away from tying up the scoreline. So that crazy pathway back in the game you mentioned, Jason, doesn't seem all that crazy right now. So we haven't, see see, we haven't seen a gun round yet, right? Yeah. Like we kind of did in round two, but not, not, not full gun round. Not so much. So yeah. that, that's going to be the real test. And that's of, where things went wrong. Yeah. And that's where we'll see like the eye test of what kind of a defense Nine Pandas can really bring out. Even in that round, it looked like they, they had some ideas on how to recover and were managing things pretty well, all things considered. Just a couple critical kills go in the other direction. It's always so crazy to me that 10-5, this used to just be half time not so long ago. I know, it, it feels so different now. <laughs> it feels like we're just uh, really deep in the game at this point. Three away from victory for nine pandas. Exercise just pushing beyond the fountain. He's got Jock going behind him. Nine pandas have gone for a double stack around long. It would be... A death sentence for a 3D Max player to walk over there. No Maka. Is he going to do it? Just as that fallback is coming in, Nine Pandas have given themselves a bit more range, and the AK-47 would be favored now, but they get into bathroom, so they dodge getting spotted by Maka. And in fact, it gets even better for them because they are getting close to the bomb. And the Mac-10 now in this kind of close quarters combat, it can melt opponents. Jocko realizes they're in toilets. He's fortunately found the timing around the back to dodge them. And maybe he can join up with his teammates or even go for a fight into toilets trying to catch Glowing Unready. He might actually get away with this. AK into the fight. This time Jocko wins it. Brought down low though. Now there's the push towards short. Oh, this M4 making short work of C's and Dillard. Even oh. the Deagle. Clax goes down next. And they already know the position of this last player, so Bomb's gonna hustle over to the B-Bomb site, and six for 3D Max. Yeah, they expect this scoreline, but now you've obviously mentioned that we have to wait to the gun rounds to see yeah, how good 3D Max are really gonna be on this T side. I think this next one is gonna be like the, the important eye test of 3D Max can actually make a half of this, or Nine Pandas is, is uh, now just gonna stabilize and march forward. Yeah, well, speaking of marching forward, FaZe and Eternal Fire looking to do that into the Major. Currently looking like FaZe are gonna be able to pull that off over Eternal Fire. You guys can go and watch that action over on the PGL mainstream. Phase Eternal Fire. Wow, so much firepower involved in that matchup. Yeah, good to see Phase though, not really falling prey to that 2-0 start. Not, not descending too far down after the loss to G2, just getting through, handling business. That's what you want to see for a team like Phase. Eternal Fire, I still feel good about their chances of making it through. They've looked so good recently coming into the start of the season. Yeah, Katowice was an eye-opening experience for, for uh, how good Eternal Fire has gotten at the start of CS2. And yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know if there's too many teams I would favor against them left in the tournament for their 2-2 for their match. Yeah, very true. They're Expecting left. Na'Vi to get through then at this point, but... Yeah, here we go. Three max, gun round is up. I'm assuming nine pandas have very good buy too. But really it is all focus on 3D Max. That's a good start. Maka gets rid of Clax. Haji swings it open. The door connector. Grenades are about to pile on top of Idis Balance, perhaps actually even seized. It's always tough when you play close wood just outside Monster, because you always get a grenade on the head. I can't believe he kept that MAC-10, although I'm assuming it's so they could drop and get the AWP out on Idis Balance early on. 
damage balance. That's why you get the AWP out, because he can hit shots like that. Flick up straight through the cranium of Lucky. And Exercise now making a play through. Uh, he's the only player for 3D Max on this side of the map, and he's hoping he can fake out a rotation. He's hoping he can pull these players away, and that's exactly what he's doing. And this gives his teammates an even better shot at making their way through the beep bomb site. Yeah, but the, the op spotted only one. The op knows the game. No one's, no one's shifting and now. They haven't Once, pushed. They haven't gone in the timing. You know, they're going to try and open it up right now, and they do find it. Dillidez is trying to join up over towards Sandbags. They got to be real careful. 3D Max, there's still a chance for this round to go south. I just balance his holding for that bridge push in towards him, but nothing coming his way yet. Bomb plant coming down through that smoke, and 3D Max, a 4v2, with exercise in behind enemy lines. What? I guess you considered I just balance was last spot at heaven, and maybe didn't think he got away, so... A little unfortunate there, but it's still going to be a safe call for Nine Pandas. They're not going for this one. Yeah, that would have been a great weapon to take away. Yeah, maybe just, I think, overthinking the situation. Regardless, seventh round for 3D Max, and I think if, if we want to be honest, we said this was important as the eye test to see if a comeback is possible, and it looked like 3D Max managed that T-side just fine. Yes, indeed they did. If obviously they're not going to be pushing in towards the east. So, M4 and AWP save for 9 Pandas. No one else has money on the team, so you can drop from Ida's Bounce, you can drop from Seas, and you can get a good buyout here again if you're 9 Pandas. So, it doesn't get much easier for 3D Max. You're still going to have to go up against a good buy that contains the AWP. But you're, you're seeing Mac actually involved early on with the AWP and exercise with a pressure lurk on the other side of the map. A little bit more freed up for 3D Max here. Sure. Three more steps, and they've tied this game up. Interesting. Uh, Haji's having a pretty chill game. Not necessarily a good at 2-8. Yeah, chill is... Not a whole lot of deaths, not a whole lot of kills. He's kind of a passenger in this one. Opening Ooh. kill. Oh, they're going to keep going forward as well. This is a really nice timing to hit. Clax picks up the AWP, delivers some death, but trades are there. He's still got the AWP, and he's still at the pillar. 3 to Max need to stay composed here. They know they've got the utility advantage. 3v3 established and seized his push forward, getting in behind that smoke, trying to spam down through it, dodging the bullets. Is lucky like he's inside of the Matrix. It's gonna drop back and slow things down again. Yeah, Nine Pandas can take a little bit of a breath here. They know there's two players towards Monster. Anji's over in short. They're looking for a push. It feels like 3D Max just want to punish any kind of follow-up peek, and they've had a couple of them from Nine Pandas, especially back on Nuke. They know this team plays a little bit loose. They can give you a mistake if it's necessary. Monster's going to be smoked off from the A bomb site, and now, th now, excuse, yeah, 3D Max have a decision to make. Do they want to wait this out? Do they want to attack short, or do they want to move across the map? Seize gets into Monster. He wants information. No, don't do it. Oh, he is about to walk into the trap, but is anybody looking at him? No, they're not looking at him! Oh god, Seize gets a double on the push through Monster, and Hachi is the only player left. He gets one back and no one considered it. No one thought that play was a possibility. We asked Seize not to do it, and it turns out to be the best play he could have made. 25 seconds left now. Disaster strikes for 3D Max. And we talked about the chill game for Haji, but now he has a big clutch ahead of him, and the AWP is posted. Haji's down, and 3D Max, it's a disaster here. That's crazy. That is so crazy. They had the pause call. It, all you had to do was watch these jokes. I think even the coach is holding his hands up like, well, he might have been telling the admin. I'll, I'll stop cheering, but he had to be so nervous watching C's make this play. I cannot believe they took their eyes off that. The whole point of the pause call is to take advantage of situations like this. And C's gets, asleep. Away, he gets He gets away with murder. Wow, that is probably the first punch to the face is about to knock 3D Max out of overpass and send this series to Ancient. Glowing getting aggressive. Steps being made by Exercise. He's going to peek into it and know he's got a victim right around that corner. The Nine Pandas have the first kill of the follow-up round. So looking very good right now for 3D Max, or rather Nine Pandas. And look at the way they're playing really in your face Counter-Strike on this defense. You even have one in the corner with the AWP seized oh, yeah. nice and easy. Joko just crouches into it. Maka's got to come over with the AWP to try and hold things off. Good kill from Haji, and all of a sudden they're pulling it a little bit back. Yeah, Seize is getting out of there. He's taking a lot of damage and doesn't want to stick around. So he gets back to safety. Haji's coming up through the connector, and Mac is at the top of the stairway. So Haji's going to join him. And they'll focus on that jump spot. At dice, I think I just balance his eyes were sharp enough to catch a glimpse of Mecca. So he stops jumping. 
settles in. Now with 50 seconds left in the round, nine pandas have more of a passive setup on this eight bomb site with the advantage of players. Haven't really committed to it quite yet, and that's Haji turning the corner. Off angle, deep off angle from Ida's balance. No chance for Haji there. And the rest will follow it up and head back out towards long. Did what? Okay, Cease was in the open. It dies, that's a free kill. 20 seconds, now charging in. Final maneuver here for 3D Max. Cease has just given them the opening into the site for free. Absolutely no toll paid whatsoever. So 2v3 now in the post plan. And 3D Max have a shot at turning this one back, but no one's considering the flank. No one's even thinking about it. Why? It's, it's, not, even, it's not even a possibility it, in their brain. They're just, it's just taking a risk. But it, but it has to be. And, and Lucky's just tucking his head down. Well, it's not going to work out. At least Maka looks like he's in a position <laughs> to be put into the clutch here. Lucky gets cleared looking at the ground, and, and now Maka's position is spotted. So it's an easy retake for Nine Pandas. Strange round overall from both teams. Weird mistakes, weird positioning, but... I think, I mean, as we know, Lucky had plenty of time to get back in towards bathrooms, but Lucky can't know that. It's yeah, just, he thinks they're maybe already... Right. Yeah. Unfortunately, unfortunate situation, but it, it is now map point for Nine Pandas, and Ancient is just a step away. One single step for Nine Pandas, and they take us to map three. This is how it started. Aggression towards Fountain, towards Playground, and just handling business. Good retake as well from Nine Pandas. They've been solid in that department throughout the two maps that we've seen played today. And they've got five chances to close this out and stay alive here at the EURMR. Dilarez, Flax takes short water control. Lucky is the first victim of the round. No falling back without another kill, and a lot of damage done towards Connector 2. So, Maka, important kill to commit here for 3D Max. Yeah, but all these rounds, like, so many more of these rounds are just like recovery for 3D Max. True. They're losing so many openings. Nine Panda is like, this is aggression that we didn't see in 3D Max's CT side, and it's making their offense so, so hard to handle. Look at Jocko. He's at least got a close towards barrels, but an important trade from Klax, and that should be enough now to close this one out. Nine Pandas, 3v1 up against Exercise. Ancient wedding in the wings. Overpass was not a comfortable affair for 3D Max. I think they'll be happy to close the door on it. This series comes down to basically a best of one at this point. They will all be decided on Ancient. The survival or elimination here. Yeah, that's that's a nice recovery in map two. I think I think obviously Nine Pandas it felt from watching that first half, especially like just